Oh, I yeah, thought you already dude. did. No. Come on. No, I did. Okay. I don't. I don't believe you. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> 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 Welcome to RDX, guys. Uh, yeah, take it yeah. over. Yeah, what's going on, guys? This dealer here back again with yet another RDX podcast where we have some absolutely uh, enthralling topics. That's a perfect word, right, D-Batch? Enthralling topics. Uh, great panel. And, uh, you know, we might even have a surprise guest, depending on if everything kind of works out. So I'll go into detail there in a minute. But I got to say hi to everyone that's uh, watching live. Hit that uh, share button, that like button, all that stuff if you can. It really helps why we get into some of these shout outs. Some of the topics, and uh, let's get into some introductions real quick, and we'll start we'll start getting things rolling. But again, guys, thanks for joining us, Cody Eastwood. How have you been? Really good. Uh, thanks for having all right, me thanks. on. All right, thanks. D batch. Uh, yeah, I'm just kidding, Colt. Yeah, I mean, everything doing good. Everything great. <laughs> there's nothing. There's nothing else I have to say. No, it's been you know just <clears throat> let's get some games. All right, shout Wait out to games. Neon. Everything's delayed. Shout out to shout out to Neon Shinobi, who is another channel member again. Seeing some of these names pop up, Shadow Ra- Shadow Ravager. Uh, new membership as well. Maybe it's just kicking people out of it. I'm noticing some people are re-upping. But uh, again, damage control in the gameplay preemptively too, uh, by the way. Just uh, kind of getting used to the, some of the different cars, driving them for the first time in a long time, and some of the weather conditions. Oh, back, shit. back in the... Uh, shut the fuck up, Zachary. We've already raced. <laughs> and back in the uh, the career mode, and it, I, I, I'm not used to seeing the game in some of these uh, scenarios. It looks so damn good. And when I'm just tuning a car, I never see... Like these kind of conditions combined very often at all, so it was really cool to to see how, how great this game still looks. Forza Motorsport Seven, almost three years later, man. This year, three years. So, uh, awesome looking game, awesome playing game. D Batch, how you been, man? I'm good. I'm good. I can't wait to get into today's show, man. The topics are gonna be so juicy. Um, <laughs> <Whoa. this> is- <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Damn, well, dealer hey, just crashed. How do you Go feel? Ahead. How do you feel about that, D? Feel about you crashing? No. Okay. Fonzarelli. <laughs> How have you been, buddy? Yeah, hey, I've been doing great. And uh, speaking of uh, Forza uh, Mo- Motorsport or Forza, uh, what would you buy? Horizon or more Motorsport? Which one? Uh, well, it probably it looks like matter. Tetris to you. You, anyway, you sound like you got anyway. no internet. You're breaking up a little bit. This motherfucker's turned to a Decepticon live on air. I guess I died. I guess I died. Anyway, right. shout out to Obi Wan because uh, my Drivatar, I guess my Ford Focus has been just just destroying him <laughs> in Forza. So shout out to my Drivatar. Hey, shout uh, out to Fonz for hitting a thousand subs. Yeah. Hey. Yes. Thank you. Hey. Thank you, everybody, for subbing to the Grounded Gamer. People are looking up my name uh, under Fonzarelli, and they're finding some douche singer, as somebody put it. And I'm like, no, it's kind of like you should channel. probably change your name in the podcast, huh? Hmm. So, yeah, yeah, the grounded game. <laughs> All yeah, right. Yeah. Well, either way, uh, thanks for joining us, brother. Congratulations on a thousand. It's just the beginning. Keep it going. X Cloud Tim Dog floating down from the sky in an umbrella like Mary Poppins. How you been, buddy? Hey, <laughs> how you guys doing? Very happy to be here. Just got off of vacation. Was up at the Great Wolf Lodge up in Pennsylvania. Great Wolf Lodge. Water Park. Uh, so I'm uh, refreshed, ready to go, and uh, we got a really good uh, panel this week, and hopefully the guy shows up who's supposed to show up, uh, and uh, who, who possibly could show up, and um, <laughs> looking forward to the topics. <coughs> yeah, Nautical was supposed to be here, by the way, but he got called into work, uh, and then David Preen messaged me, because I'm trying to work out a time with him. Uh, he is the guy basically, bi- he's the senior hardware, uh, engineer behind the series X, right? This is the guy that's building the damn box. And he said he might stop by today, which would be awesome. Um, so he joined our discord I mean, under a weird, I don't know if it's a new discord account or what, but, uh, he joined the discord and all that. He said he might be able to jump in. And if not, I just told him, Hey, we're doing a show in two hours. I know we can't get the uh, fourth to work out. But, uh, you know, we're doing a show in two hours. If you can't jump in then, maybe we'll work out something after the 11th or something. But uh, he's coming to the show eventually, if not today. But David Preen, he is um, definitely a guy that knows a thing or two. And I I told him I wouldn't ask him anything that's not confirmed. Uh, But, you know, a little bit of perspective, stuff like that. There's plenty that has been talked about that we can get a little bit of perspective on from the guy that literally is behind the box, the, the Series X itself. So he might jump in, he might not. If not, he will come at a later date in a few weeks. Next week, we have Seamus Blackley, the creator of the Xbox, coming Ooh. on. So keep your eyes peeled for the next show. And also, shout out to uh, over 600 watching us already, guys. Thank you so much for what you do. Again, share it out. Hit that like button. Uh, retweet it. Do what you do. Uh, help us grow even more. We do appreciate it. Zalker87. 
How have you been? I'm doing damn good, man. Excited to talk about all the topics. It's great. Uh, I kind of miss everybody in here. You know, it's been a crazy hectic week. Uh, new job, new stuff like that. But yeah, I'm ready to talk about all this stuff. Keep up, kept up with everything. Um, yeah, and the chat's awesome. Look at them. They're all fired up, man. They're ready. They're yeah. ready. And dealer, by the way, you damage control this gameplay more than a Sony fan has damage control. The- that was a nice try, but it just came bad. off as you didn't even know what it the did. fuck you were going to say. It came off terrible. It rolled yeah, it was off horrible. Nothing. Went better luck next time. No, nah, I mean, honestly... Uh, <laughs> It, it was jumping back into some of these random cars and some of these events, man. This game is a blast, even though I was spending the first lap of almost every one of them, the second lap trying to learn the car, get the most out of it. It was, uh, you know, it was a fun. It just the game feels so damn good. Uh, and I'm doing a really big video on uh, something like the next Forza game and all that stuff right now. If I don't, I didn't have a video on Monday because I, this is a pretty big video. So, um, you know, it's hard to imagine how much better it could really feel. So, again, uh, that is our panel as of right now. Uh, shout out to Nautical who couldn't make it, and shout out to David who might be able to make it. We will see. I've got some other shout outs as well. We've got to give uh, these guys a shout out, and keep in mind that the patron stuff, my patrons, all that stuff updates around the first of every single month. So if you joined, you'll be here, you know, eh, of course, after the first, all that stuff will be updated. But for now, we've got Johnny Virtuous. We've also got Foreign Object, Teo, John Blue, Darth Chaos, The Bad Boy Live, Vec Boss, Deviator X, Obi Wan FTW. Tasteless Genie, Scout Trooper 74. Is it 74 or 73? No, that's someone else. Centurion 1307, Real Deal Neil, Suicide King, Michael Bowen, Guillermo Cavillo, Chanagram, Fork Boy Gaming, Naughty Nubbin, Alfonso Hogan, A Squad, of course, Slim 73, and Mo Cool Kid. And we got to give a special shout out. And I'm going to put this link in the chat while I remember. And I know this is a long intro. I apologize, but this is important. Um, clowns. Uh, you know, great community member. The guy is never in any of the drama. He just, he plays games. He does what he does, man. And he tries to have fun. Uh, he is, uh, he's had an accident in his family and my buddy, uh, stick from Australia set up a GoFundMe for him for his, uh, wife or his girlfriend. And, um, I shared it out on Twitter, but I told UK Dazarus, uh, that I wanted to help out some more which I do because, again, Clowns has been nothing but kind to everyone that I know of, and it seems like a great guy. So I'm going to share the GoFundMe in the the chat, and I'll link it after the show. Uh, If you guys care and you want to give a dollar, five dollars, whatever, because this is a pretty bad accident, and, you know, here in the States, you are fucked if if the healthcare stuff scenario is not sorted out in your household. Um, So, you know, it's hard. So if you guys can contribute anything... You know, instead of super chatting here tonight, contribute to that link right there. We do appreciate it. Uh, you guys are awesome. So again, thanks and shout out to Clowns, who uh, who again, from all accounts, is a, is an is an awesome dude. And, and uh, shout out to UK Daz and, and Stick Figure and all them for setting all this up. Great group of guys. Um, and we're not always able to keep up with everybody, man. But that's again, that's nothing to do with the fact that we don't want to keep up. We're just trying to keep up with a ton of people, and it, it's not always easy. So. I want to give a big shout-out to those guys. So, again, uh, let's get on, and not to drag you guys down, let's jump into a pretty fun topic right off the bat. Horizon Zero Dawn coming to PC, according to Woo! Kotaku, and most importantly, you know, no, 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 not according to Kotaku, according to Rand Outdoor. Now, Rand, Rand put this out here publicly first, right? There's a reason that I had put, hey, uh, go out and screen cap uh, all those freaking out about Horizon Zero Dawn going to PC, right? Because I know, you know, Rand, I know Rand knows the shit. So I put that out there as well. I didn't get the flack for it, though. Rand's getting a lot of flack when he said that Horizon was coming to PC and then the PS Now thing happened. But now Kotaku, Jason Schreer, who has me blocked and I never even talked to the guy, has also reported that Horizon Zero Dawn is coming to PC. And if he's put it out there, then he isn't going to put something out there that's probably you know not going to happen like that. So we are told that this is just the beginning. There's a reason that we were saying this a month ago, maybe longer. And there's a reason that this podcast has said this for literally years, that everything is going to end up going everywhere. And you're just going to sign in. You'll have your games. Boom. Like It's just going to be how it's going to be. So Horizon Zero Dawn, PC, this is a big move. It's a big thing. It's something many people did not believe. Then Kotaku speak on it. And, oh, now that it's in article form, it's real, right? Tim Dog, your first thoughts on this when you heard about it. 
<laughs> well, I remember uh, Rand really got dogpiled on uh, that day, and I remember talking to Rand on the phone and and basically saying, just uh, you know, just buy your time. Tell people, you know, you'll see. And uh, you know, shout out to Rand. <laughs> Uh, you know, he did take a, he took a beating that day, and uh, the same people that that were uh, you know going at him were suddenly quiet and shut up when the news came out this week uh, or that last week that uh, it was going to PC. Uh, so I just wanted to say that about Rand. Uh, Rand Rand uh, doesn't talk about his sources a lot, uh, but he knows his stuff. He really does. And uh, if he says something. Instead of looking to get you in a gotcha moment, listen next time. And that's a, a lesson that should be taken. Now, as far as uh, this goes, um, yeah, I mean, Dealer, we've talked about this uh, before. Uh, this is something that we've heard. Uh, we've heard that it might be even all games. Um, they are looking to This get, is just the beginning. Uh, yeah, this is just the beginning. And uh, they're looking to, uh, you know, get money off of the pc platform and for all the sony fanboys uh, uh speak are, up tim they're saying you're quiet speak up yeah i can, uh, I can no, turn for all, the, for, for all the sony fanboys that are um you know really going uh crazy i you know just relax <laughs> this is not gonna affect you it's something that uh you know it's just other people are gonna play your games it doesn't mean it's day and date yet it might never be day and date. It will. Uh, let other people, <laughs> even if it is, let other people enjoy your game. But Tim, it will affect them. I mean, why get a PS5 if they can play it on PC, right? Remember? Right. Yeah. Well, they they set God themselves yeah. up like like with everything else. <laughs> it's it stupid logic. But um, I just think that they should really chill out. And um, Sony is well, smart for doing this. It's, it's 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 it makes PC better, and it's two different things, in my opinion, two different factions. Of well, games. it makes gaming better, and and I have to say, to go back a little bit on on Rand, you know, it takes a certain type of individual to like admit when they're wrong. And Rand, like, he actually when you when when he was getting piled on, he was like, hey, you know, I might be wrong. It's all right. Like, you know, he was kind of like that. And then when no, the article Rand dropped, knew. He, he was just waiting. I know, I know, but he he, you know what I mean. He was kind of like, hey. Like, it was like, all right, guys, you know, I might be wrong, but that's what he was. But then when the article dropped, he rose like a fucking phoenix <laughs> and just swiped across to everybody. And he just crop dusted everybody. <laughs> he did. He fucking, and, and it's like, and it was funny. Like, and he he knew it, too. Like, he, you could just tell he's waiting in the corner like a fuck. Like, he just knew. Like, I, I ah, man, I love Rand. That's all I, I got to say. Like a dude in a trench coat at a Chuck E. Cheese. Hey, Rumpel Foreskin, he oh, says well, that. Fuck. He yeah. says Tim talking to uh, through a Dixie cup and some string. Yeah, well, I don't know. Uh, he, <laughs> he'll be, he's sorry. Right. He sounds all right. Back. He sounds all right. I, I, I turned him up. I, I know I'm using. You just sound phone. kind of further away from me. I got you. I got you, Tim. Hey, we already got okay. almost a thousand people watching live, guys. Hey, if you haven't already, consider hitting that like button. Let's try to get to four or five hundred for the end of the show. A thousand after the fact. You guys are uh, the best in the universe. Colt Eastwood. This is something that we've been on. You know, like I said, I get full credit for the early look. I'm hearing this. This is going to happen. That goes to Rand. No one else. Not Jason oh, Schreier. Yeah. No one else. Right? You can't take that away from them. And they'll try. But when it yeah, comes I mean, to everyone who's been talking about this, this is something that we've been talking about for years. The fact that, hey, your games are coming to PC. There's a reason Microsoft did it. It is a matter of time. Thoughts? The, the experts are projecting this as well. They're expecting the platform agnostic approach to change. And uh, I don't understand why this is a problem for any PlayStation gamer that complains about exclusives because they can play all those games on their PC that they use just to play Xbox games. Mm-hmm. So uh, <laughs> that's the problem. I, I mean, I've been like talking on my channel. We've been doing this RDX about the, uh, the way exclusives are changing. And you know, since 2015, uh, games on Xbox have gone to PC. And they just said, I'll just play those games on my PC. They said that forever. And uh, now if a Horizon Zero Dawn or, or heaven forbid, The Last of Us 2, which we'll talk about later, comes to PC, if that happens, uh, they're upset. But they'll have the opportunity to play that on their PlayStation or their PC, their choice. Because according to some of these big fanboys, they have both. But mm-hmm. they will not buy an Xbox. It's a little weird, right? Like... Why not just enjoy it? Like I, every, I feel like they're looking for excuses. Like, oh, it's just the Decima engine. That's why no. it's going there. Ooh, and it's like, no, it's not. It's not. They can't enjoy it because to... they enjoy the prospect of a sanctuary walled garden exclusive that you can't have this unless you spend three or four hundred dollars and buy a PlayStation. Well, yeah. that's the easy. It's so much easier to buy an Xbox or a PlayStation. 
So you're not in this exclusive country club. It's not even certain. That. <laughs> Riding around on golf carts and shit. Country Riding club around in a three hundred dollar or four hundred dollar golf cart. You know that's all, what the exclusive PlayStation uh, club but is. It, it but also has to deal with the fact that these guys want to continue to make fun of Xbox for doing that. It, ah, this shit. has a lot to do with that. This has a lot to do with oh, Xbox great. doing it. They want to make fun of Xbox for doing it. And don't you dare Sony do this at all because it, it, it'll devalue the console to the point where consoles will go away all of a sudden. You know, they weren't it's worried about that with the Xbox necessarily. The but left. Well, but here's, here's what's so dumb about that argument. Here's the dumbest thing about that argument. If people wanted those better graphics and everything, they would have already been on PC for many years now. There's such thing as a console gamer out there. I'm a console gamer. Most of us here, all of us here are console gamers. Almost. Like, except for Zucker. We, except for Zucker. Anyway. Indeed. But we, we want to play on console, okay? There, you're not going to, there's nothing you can do to make me not buy a console if it just, I'm sorry, if the games are going to PlayStation and Xbox, I will always have a PlayStation and Xbox. Fonz, I'm not what, buying a PC, well, ever. What would happen if they announced, Fonz, what would you do if they said, uh, the next Spider-Man game by Insomniac is only going to PC? Then you would go like, oh, I don't see, need a console see, anymore. But see, that's but not the, the case. Here's the thing, though. Um, yeah, <clears throat> it's not saying I would never buy a console. There has been games that I wanted to play that were exclusive to PC, and that's why I got into PC gaming years ago. But we're not talking about exclusives to PC. We're talking about Those games really that are going to PC as well as console. Who cares? Why, why, why does anybody care that somebody gets to enjoy a game that you got to enjoy? I mean, personally, well, it, it doesn't helped. affect me in, in, in the least. It, I mean, sure, you might sell a, a few less consoles, but you're really not going to uh, take... Look how glorious this game, game looks, Fonz. I, 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 I just want to add to this. First of all, these Sony guys that are against this, they're the worst cheerleaders ever, honestly. Because <laughs> if you really if, if you really sit back and look at what Sony is Super doing, facts. they're, they're going to increase their revenue. They're going to increase their um, potential install base yeah. for people to play their games at, which equals more money, which equals bigger and better fucking games. If you're going to get a PlayStation mm -hmm. 5, it, your games are still going to play on the PlayStation 5. Console, console guys and PC guys are too fucking separate markets so yeah some people are gonna say yep. okay you know what this game's coming to the pc so maybe i'm not gonna get a playstation well, 5 that that number is small and fucking minute compared to the amount of people that will get a playstation 5 it doesn't it doesn't affect each other pc guys aren't gonna get a playstation 5 regardless most of them because they look at console guys no offense as like fucking peasants i don't want to fucking get a console <laughs> but your ps5 is faster than my 1070 ti oh shit I, yeah it doesn't have enough teraflops <laughs> and like like seriously so they're not gonna jump to, to they're not gonna jump to playstation 5 either so these guys now have a chance to experience the PlayStation yep. games. And I'm going to be frank with you guys. I want to fucking see what Naughty Dog can do when they can target a 14, 15 teraflop GPU <coughs> opposed to the consoles. I want to see how far they can go because what they've been able to achieve with 1.8 teraflops is fucking amazing. And what they're going to be able to achieve on the consoles, on the PlayStation 5 with whatever, 9, 10 teraflops is going to be being. Is fucking amazing. Why do you guys fucking care if the game is yeah, going is on angry fucking tonight. PC? No, it's, it's, it's annoying. Yeah, it's it's, it's, yeah, it's really true. annoying. I hear you, there's, brother. There's, I hear you. Put the numbers no down. I'm scared. That they can't play under fucking... <laughs> They can't have these games exclusively under a piece of fucking plastic. When more people playing their games, <laughs> it's better for them. Yeah. And especially the multi... So multi what you're saying is like, it, the more users, the more they sell there, the more investment in what is potentially their favorite ecosystem, right? Yes, yeah, and an audience, an audience in chat, anyone listening to D, you have to remember D plays like probably 80, 75% on PC. That's his favorite platform to play on. And he plays on, on both consoles uh, and the Switch, right? Yeah, like, the Switch. yeah he a little weird. Yeah, you have to understand where D Batch is coming <laughs> from. Like, he prefers the power of the, of the PC, but he understands. This is what he's saying. He understands what this means for gaming. If a game, a current game on Naughty Dog has never been 60 FPS, you have to get the remasters from last gen to see their, their masterpiece at 60 frames. This is going to be a game changer. Here's something I brought up on a PTK show. Uh, if you haven't checked out Blam's podcast, uh, check it out. I might have dropped another nugget or two of things I haven't talked about anywhere else either. But um, what I had said about Halo is that Halo has a ultra-high-end version coming as well through the PC, right? 
I mean, you've got all the top end effects. If you played on PC, you know that you got crazy effects that you just you just don't see it on console, right? And when they bring out the Series X, you're gonna get those crazy effects on the Series X, right? With the next Last of Us, I since there is no high end PC version of Last of Us Two, not yet anyway. Mm-hmm. You are gonna they're gonna have to go in and literally build those features in to even make the PS5 version as good as it can be. Whereas with Halo. You've already got that super ridiculous ultra high end version on the PC now, right? When, when it launches Halo but it's Infinite. Held back. But so that's that's my thing is the fact that not uh, Last of Us Two isn't on PC day one that we know of, or we could use a different game uh, as an example, is actually going to hold back the PS5 version, I would imagine, because you don't have those features to scale down. Now somebody will clip that, and, and I'm sure you're too ignorant to understand what I'm even trying to say here, but there is a benefit to having an ultra high-end PC version that you can just bring those high-end features that are already built for a higher-end platform down right. to the console version. Right, top and down yeah. PC. Hey, I gotta give a shout-out to uh, Guillermo Cabillo. He says, over here, slate as hell, but at work, shout-out to the panel. Thank you so much, sir. We do appreciate it, man. Guillermo is always around doing his thing. We've also got Don't Call Me White. He says, PC Master Race. He's joining the PC Master Race. We've, and we got some really, really interesting topics coming up as well That where it's like, man, Sony really are just full on, you know. Woo! It is what and, it is. And, and, and it is, like, to be honest, everybody, like, there wasn't just Sony fans making fun of this. When they started going to PC, like when Xbox was, there were some Xbox fans that were fucking hating on it, too. Like, mm-hmm. let's just be all oh, equal, yeah. right? Like, yeah. a lot of people were hating sure, on yeah. it for some yeah. stupid yeah, fucking reason. That was five and years, though. People have kind of got yeah, no, used no, to it. No, I know, but even... Well, but there was plenty some of people Xbox just... fans that, that, that left or rightfully... <laughs> I don't know I'm about getting left. refund. No, no, but it no. Just, there, was, there was people that, that actually said, I, I'm not doing it. There was the same type... There wasn't this type of hysteria when it went to Xbox, but there was definitely a lot of people saying... You know they're 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 uh, giving away their games to PC. Well, problem is they and, think Jim Ryan's holding their hand at night with a warm cup of milk next to him while they're sleeping. He's not your friend, all right. These companies exist to make money, and that's fine. But don't over and, don't have these expectations right. that they are looking out for you and your exclusivity. They see PC is well, a 500 million user base market at least, right? They want some of that. Well, that's and that's uh, what the, I'm the saying is that you don't think you don't think that people like at Sony while everybody's making fun of it. They kept track of what Xbox was doing. They kind of looked and saw like, oh, is this going to work? Yeah, because like, Microsoft did the experiment. Yeah, yeah, they did the experiment, and it fucking exactly. worked, obviously. It worked tremendously for them because Sony wouldn't be doing this if it didn't fucking work, people. It did. It was a success. Like, the- Xbox wouldn't have gotten the funding it did without, like, them doing everything they've done lately in the last couple of years. You don't think Sony sees that? Like, honestly. Like, come the on. Last, well, when you, the when last you- numbers on PC, like, PC gamers that I can recall... It's 1.2 billion PC fucking gamer. So why would they cut? Why would any Bill? company cut themselves Bill. out of that market? And once again, they're two separate fucking markets. Like, it's all right. it, well, I, I, well, well, it is. It is two separate markets, D. But but like I would say, me and D are are, are a little bit different. Like I do play on PC and Xbox mainly. <laughs> and I love playing on PC because of like like Warcraft Three. I can't play that on console. Like Warcraft Free Forge. Like I can't play that on console. So I'm gonna play it on PC. Obviously, that's just how I am. And D likes playing on PC because he likes benchmarking everything. And you know, like that's just what he does because he loves it. You know, he's a weird bitch. But that like if if Sony had their games on PC, like I don't have PS Plus. I don't play anything. Mm-hmm. Like I don't. I don't have any friends. Not one of my friends goes on. Get on a PlayStation part. They never. Except fucking for go Dealer on and there. I, in the rare occasion. Yeah. Like and then when year. we're on there, we're like, this shit's trash. And then I, no. like, this shit's <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, but I don't do that. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I just, I just think. Listen, you look at when Sony, when they, when they were, uh, you know, they talking about the console being a niche <clears> market <throat> and certain things that they've said that the, uh, you know, the um, powerpoints that they were using that you can, um, you know, take your games or it's just more than a console that type of stuff. The writing's been on the wall, and you know what? Yeah. Like, yeah. like everyone says it, it's not a big deal. It's actually a good thing. Um, the only thing that destroys is it destroys a fanboy argument. And you know, when I 2015, when I knew that Gears was going to PC, and I knew that that was this is before really people knew about it. I thought to myself, I said, really, the only thing that this affects me is, is that I can't use it as uh, you know fodder on Twitter, <laughs> or you know, it's it, it's a fanboy argument. 
And yeah. that's, that's really what it boils down to. It's nothing more than that. If you really look at it, it gives more people options to play that are not going to play on console. It gives you another option. If you do get a PC or whatever, you can play your game and probably cross save it and cross play it. Uh, and all that good stuff. Just wait. It's a till... good thing. Just, well, just go with it. Just, just well, just go. wait till X Cloud hits. Because I, I'll, I'll be. I, mm-hmm. I didn't. When X Cloud first came out, I played it for a couple days, and I was like, "That's cool." I actually so like <laughs> at work, I have like an hour, an hour and a half to do whatever I want. I started playing X Cloud at work, and it's fucking amazing. Like mm-hmm. it's honestly like great. Like I'm actually like super impressed. Like I've been playing. Don't it you every love day how like the dashboard is there? Zucker and I were yeah. both. Uh, Message each other today because we both ended up playing uh, X Cloud during our lunch breaks. Uh huh. You know, several sta- couple states away, and I played Just Cause Four, and I thought, would this game work on here? Like trying to aim at stuff, and and I only have two point four gigahertz Wi Fi at my work, and so it's not even supposed to work, and yeah, no. uh, it's not ideal. But I was playing. I played for like a half an hour straight. Well, yeah, I, don't see what the I big played deal for forty five minutes straight on on my uh, my mobile network, Colt. Like literally, and it was flawless, like flawless. Well, hey, I don't understand what the big deal is anyway. At the end of the day, these companies see a large number of people that they can go after. They're going to do the same thing with the mobile market, like like we've been saying for a long time. Xbox is trying to do that that global reach. They're trying to do more with the mobile market there. Sony's going to do the same thing eventually. It's it's just, you know, they've already started in Japan with some PS4 games. It's This is something that we've seen. The writing has been on the wall. We've been telling you guys for years now in RDX. It's This stuff's going to happen eventually. Mm-hmm. And now we've got uh, <laughs> those people that were always so angry at us for years and now agreeing with exactly what it's, we it's said. Ki- but but here's the thing. It's, it's, <laughs> what it comes down to is basic, like, common sense. It's exactly. Just, it's it's, so it's not like, well, you think you're a know-it-all. It's like, no, idiot. Like, read. No. Read. <laughs> hey, let me give a shout-out to, uh, let me yeah. give a shout-out to uh, Svitter Man, S. Vider Man, who, who is now Svitter Man. He says, uh, what are your thoughts on the top 20 saying games of the decade I'm guessing him at selling uh, instead of saying uh, the decade with Microsoft having two games and Sony having any none basically. Uh, love the show. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much. I didn't see the list. Uh, did anybody see, I didn't the... see that? I didn't see that either. Apparently, you want to link it, Spider Man? Yeah, it's Vitterman. 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 Hey, David Robinson, go ahead and leak that. Vitterman. And we'll have Zachary. Uh, hey, David Robinson, gra- uh, shout out to David. He says, greetings. I always share uh, this with my, um, yeah, he always shares the podcast with his grandsons, family, friends, etc. Thank you so much, sir. He said, we should all share these podcasts. Get our number up. Get our numbers up. We, uh, we're we already shining. D should be angry. D, you should be angry. He says, shout out to the whole panel for for holding it down. Thank you so much, David. Do appreciate it, brother. Yeah, uh, and also don't call me white again with D-Batch. Did you see the leaked specs? Uh, that's moving. 430 series. I don't know what he's talking about, D. Uh, for the series, I, I don't know. What he- <clears throat> Did you see the leaked specs? 430 series. Is he talking about the, the new NVIDIA series? Oh, oh four, the is. 30 series cards. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I saw, yeah, I saw some of the specs. Um, you know, G, I think they're going to reveal it at GDC. So let's just wait until GDC. Yeah. They don't really want to comment on that. But the, the initial thing that we're hearing is that it's going to be uh, 50% um, better on power efficiency. And uh, also, they're expecting a 50% increase in performance. Now, the performance, I don't think it's on the, um, rasterize, like the, the regular rasterization of games. I think it's <laughs> on the ray tracing. I think ray tracing will be 50% better. This I think, game like, does look good, dealer. <laughs> Hey, I uh, think regular games I will have somebody. somebody Let me give a shout out to uh, <laughs> that's that's not David didn't change his name from Platypus, okay? But uh, David, go ahead and give you sh- thanks for first and foremost thanks for joining us, man, and uh, give yourself a shout out. Let us know, let everyone know what you do and all that stuff, man. And again, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, sure. Can you hear me? Yeah, Sorry. I can hear you. I'm in a car or something. <laughs> yeah, hey, <laughs> I didn't know really walking out of the meeting. <laughs> He's at least like drifting yeah. or something. Yeah. I'm somewhere. Uh, so, uh, Dave Prine, I'm the uh, senior director of hardware at the Xbox team. Awesome. And uh, uh, again, man, thanks for joining us. And, and I didn't know you were like that busy, man. But uh, e- either way, you uh, you managed to show up. Uh, everybody give David a shout, shout out in the chat. We got, you know, about 1,200 people watching now. Uh, David, again, um, 
I, I told him I wouldn't ask you, and, and I told you I wouldn't ask you anything. It's not confirmed, obviously. But uh, when it comes down to the Xbox Series X, because this completely changes our curriculum, David. Now we've got to ask, you know, a few interesting questions that we would get murdered if we didn't. When it comes down to uh, building the box, the Xbox Series X, just for clarification, you are you are basically leading that team, correct? Uh, well, I lead the PM team. Um, so we have a hardware team, and we all work together. So when you say leading it, I mean, don't get me wrong. So I'm the hardware team. Then, of course, there's the experienced team, software team. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. we have dozens and dozens of teams, but for the... I work with the team from the concept to grave type thing. So my team, we own beginning to end on the hardware part of it all. Gotcha. Okay. So the thing that people will be buying and the the software will make it all come together and work and, and all that good stuff. Um, Now I'm sure that you've heard about uh, Matt Booty, obviously being very, very transparent saying, look, you know, we're going to support the original Xbox ones for, for a year, maybe two and for some reason, people are kind of upset that you guys are not leaving people behind while in the same breath talking about how the original Xbox One drops support so quickly, or the original Xbox, rather, drops support so quickly. Um, is there anything that kind of you were thinking when, did you see this going on? Did, were you thinking to yourself, why, why are people upset at this? this you know, this isn't going to be an issue at all. Uh, you know, so that, that's a good point. <laughs> So that's the kind of question I mean I could answer, but I can't answer. In fact, uh, <laughs> it's not my team. <laughs> oh, I mean, we make it we make it 100 percent where it's compatible and backward compatible, and how they want to use it. I'll leave that up to the teams that are smarter than me on that stuff. But I mean, my personal preference, and I don't think that's a shocker to anyone about how Phil feels and everyone else, is that you know we we're, we're we're a community thing where we don't want anyone left behind. I don't care what service you're on or, or what hardware you're on. You know. You see today, adaptive controller being used for Nintendo made big news, right? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Who, 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 the idea is no one should ever be left behind anywhere. So take take nice. that as you will. Or that's just a preference. That's not a – Matt Booty, of course, speaks for the game development, how we, the strategy he wants to do on it that I can't, I can't comment on anything to do with the strategy part. So with the Series X, kind of like, you know, with PC, right? You upgrade from a, uh, you know, whatever, a 1070 to a 2070 or so on and so forth. And, and guess what? The old stuff kind of works and it all scales properly and, and all that good stuff. It's, it, it's common sense, really. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think the problem is, I, I think as a whole, the industry, and not even just gaming, I can say anything about, about PCs, even in the commercial space or cell phones, is technology. technology is changing so rapidly that, you know, how do you start making things err? And by that, what I mean is 4K or or um, a little a, a little faster, uh-huh. a little more, a little better audio. Like, like those are all great. But the problem is that the more that people want those, and the more people are willing to pay for those, that's great. And we'll continue to make everything that everyone wants. But the problem is we shouldn't expect everyone, which is the majority of our people, to to go out and shell out that kind of money every every year, every six months. So especially when it comes to things like accessories, you know, we always want to make anything that's branded Xbox or or that is a first party piece of equipment shouldn't go away every year. Like mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but I mean, yeah. One day, all of a sudden, I had a I had a headset from my iPhone with a 3.5 jack. Next thing I know, I don't. <laughs> um, and I had spent good money on a decent headset. Yeah. And so you're like, all right, well, I got screwed. And so it's you want you don't want to force people in in any ecosystem. And again, like I don't care if it's cell phones or commercial PCs or you know, you want people to to not force someone to spend money just to enjoy the same experience. Now they'll be showcase experiences you know, that are only available in something new but you shouldn't have to play looks like the ninjas got him <laughs> he's he he probably just hit a dead spot. he probably did yeah and, well to piggyback off what he was saying about like the uh the phone jack for iphone and apple that was actually like a huge debacle for them like they messed it up. It was not very good user friendly, anything like that. Like a lot of people were pissed off by it. Samsung like put a whole like campaign against them. Like I don't know if you guys saw the commercials. And like, did the same thing like the and next then year. And then only to do the same damn thing. <laughs> <It's> fucking <laughs> hilarious, right? So like that stuff was like they took the brunt end of that. So I get what he's saying by that. Like you know why force people to do something when that's not what people like? Is mm-hmm. They don't want to be forced. And, no. and 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 that was like a real big cash grab too because it, it it there was no reason for it. The phone was pretty much still the same damn size. 
Yep. Yeah. Oh, they're um, pushing the AirPods and they're trying to get rid of um, the headphone jack is like another place where moisture and dirt and water can get in. And like, I don't know. I just, I don't like that sort of thing. Then it's interesting to hear him say that uh, the whole team is all about keeping people in the ecosystem and not leaving people behind. But what I wanted to ask him is, you know, can games reach their full potential if they're still being, uh, David might be back, but uh, if you you can hear me, David, can games still reach their full potential on the Xbox Series X if there is going to be an Xbox One version? I don't know. I mean, I think <laughs> I didn't. Bounced. I didn't. I didn't know that. I didn't know he that he's like, and I'm out. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that he was. Uh, I didn't know he, he was in a uh, in a meeting. You know, I didn't know that he would. Uh, he's back. He's uh, back. And he changed hey, his name. Sorry, uh, the ninjas <laughs> got you. Name. The ninjas you got you. Question, David. No, he didn't hear I'm you. I'm sorry. He didn't hear you. No, sorry. I, got, I am driving, so I must, I'm, I must go do a bad signal or something. I'm sitting Maybe. here talking like an idiot. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it happens to all of us. We do, we do it every week, David. We do it every single week. So basically, Colt wanted to know, he wanted a little input from you. Uh, and I don't know exactly what you, obviously, if you can't say, you can't say. If you don't know enough yeah, about a certain say. scenario, then let us know. It's, it's fine. The more transparency, the better. But... Colts want to know, because uh, people are freaking out, that they don't think they'll get the most out of the Series X with games running in the original Xbox One. Can you give a take on that at all? Nah, I can't really Like I said, that's all on the booty side, and that's all like how they want to... But again, like I said, the, the, the biggest thing, I don't know where it cut off, the b- biggest thing is everything... No one should ever be left behind, meaning the experience you get today is the experience you should have tomorrow. Meaning, I can't... If someone's playing on a you know original xbox one Mm -hmm. a title should play but they're not all of a sudden gonna get the series x feature right yeah so we don't want anyone left behind the fact that i don't don't want to force someone to buy two titles three titles four titles (laughs) for the same game on four different boxes yeah but that doesn't mean that someone that's on a x i mean on a s or a xbox one should expect all of a sudden they're going to get ray tracing and all the things we're going to get with scarlet Gotcha. So, so there's no parody. At the same time, no. I, I'm sorry. There's no parody, but uh, you, you can still play the games. Just if you if you spend more money on the bigger hardware, newer hardware, you get the better, nice, the more errs. Yeah, yeah. You you and that and that's it. The point is, you'll get the more errs, and, and you'll get that kind of stuff. But we don't want to like, especially since, like I said, I don't know where it cut off again, but the idea that this stuff is going to come way faster, way more furious than everywhere, and in, in every industry, whether it be software, whether it be games, whether it be phones, whether it be computer, like the problem, the only way to get, keep things going is people are going to want more of that er and where hardware is and all that. You just can't leave people behind. I think that's, I think, I think all the industries that we're on now have learned that that's not the way to go. No, I, I would agree. And, and again, you said it yourself, you know, buy a copy and depending on what hardware you're on, boom, it works across whatever you're on. And that's, uh, that's the way to go, man. It's pro consumer as well. Right. And, and, and from a financial standpoint, yeah. it makes a lot of stuff too, in my opinion. Yeah. What d yeah, said. At the end of the day, you want everyone, you know, you want to please everyone, but you can't please everyone, right? Like you want everyone to stay in the ecosystem. I want everyone to be happy. There'll be some people that won't be happy with certain things, but you know, everything we're doing is always for the community. And so I, I, I think by offering both of, hey, you can have her or you can have what you have without spending money and still have a great experience and don't leave anyone behind. I think it's a great approach for, for everything. And like, like I said, I think you're going to find that much more common on, on all platforms, not just, not just Xbox. Yeah. Um, so we, we have seen the box, right? Uh, we've seen the design of the thing. We've seen the controller, new share button, all that stuff on there. Um, the box, when it comes down to it, 100% functionality. You know, get that heat out of there as fast as possible, right? Um, anything you can say specifically on, I mean, maybe a little details or uh, even how the share button will work differently than how sharing does today. Anything like that, that just little things, you know, that you might have thought of? Or you're just like oh, a I million can't, percent. I can't, I can't talk about that. <laughs> if it's not public yet, I can't talk about it. Ah, man. All right. All right. No, so this is public. I could ask you something that Phil said this public, but you might say, well, that's Phil's thing. Um, now, Phil did reference. Uh, per- well, no, that's numbers. You said no numbers. Um, <laughs> I, you know what? You caught me off guard here, David. It's not fair. 
I know. So, sorry. David, tell us what you do, what you're, what you do with your team, and like what some of the stuff you're doing. And you, it's in vague terms, so people can kind of understand. Other than saying that you're hardware PM, and everybody's like, huh? <laughs> Well, PN, uh, I, mean, people, uh, I mean, our audience, like we were really into the hardware and the tech and the software behind and the, uh, behind all the games. And they'd be interested to know in vague terms, like what you and your team do like right now, because you're ramping up for next generation. And mm-hmm. yeah, uh, it's a good, it's a good question. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't really know how hardware, like hardware is, I wouldn't say games are much different. Games take much longer than people think. But I think the complexity of hardware is a lot different. Like, I can't tell you how many times I get requests of, like, well, I don't understand. Just build it like this really quickly. Like, <laughs> like, hey, why, why don't – if you've, if you've got an issue with something, just, just go ahead. And here, here's my idea of how to make a metal controller, and all of a sudden, it'll never break. And, <laughs> like, all, and you're like, uh, hardware takes, like, two to three years. <laughs> yeah. Like, we don't, we don't just, like, make it – like, first, you spend a long time. So what my team does is – we have specialists, right? So we have people that specialize in like what to, what to make. And then we have people that actually execute the building. So like, like I go to CES and I'll sit there and spend half my time at small booths, not even the big, like I don't even go over to the big booth anymore. I just talk to the small people and he's like, Hey, what kind of technology are you going to have in a year? What are you going to be working on? What are you going to do? And how can we use that too? And like, what cool things can we do that aren't out there today? And then we look through that of how I could use it we might even make like proof of concept or POC type hardware where something that'll never ship, nothing we'd ever make, but we'll make it in like a black box technology where we'll incorporate, you know, we'll work with these companies. We're not saying we take it, but um, we'll like buy prototypes and we'll put things together and say, Oh, this is really cool. This is a great idea. And then we all sit around and say, Hey, this is a great business opportunity. Like something no one's ever done before. And then we get to the point where we're like, all right, we have, we now have a product of what we want to make, make a schedule, and actually go out and do it. And so we have to find companies that will make these parts in large scales because, again, you know, you ask me to make anything. And I, I mean, I can literally make anything that's capable of technology hand-built if I only want to make 50 of them. But when you want to make the kind of numbers that we sell, you know, it's only a couple companies in the world that can handle that volume. So even if we find a great new technology – they can't handle the kind of volume we can. So we have to sometimes develop and we have to actually develop the people we get the technology from to go from, Hey, I made 3000 of these a year to the kind of numbers that we make. So we spent a lot of time there and then we have to execute the schedule. And you have to integrate it with all the software and that's not the titles or games. That's just, you know, there's a lot going on the Xbox side that has nothing to do with hardware, like all the platform stuff and all home and dash and all the things that everyone enjoys of how to get to games and how to get to stores and how to monetize. And so what my team does is we actually literally own the beginning to end of all of that kind of stuff. Like we bring it all together um, and work with all the separate teams that um, do that. So like I said, I have some people that specialize on the upfront stuff. It's more on the technology side. I have people that specialize in planning and creating and making it all work together. And then I have the people who execute and actually sit in factories and make things work. You, you're just the big boss of it all, is what you're trying to say. You're flexing right now. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's, and, and to be fair, it's really not that different. Like I, before, before working on Xbox, I've spent almost all my career working on cell phones, and it's not that different. Mm. <laughs> like the companies are hardware companies are kind of hardware companies. The difference is Xbox, of course, is we're a little more niche and we're a little more passionate about our product. Um, yeah. So you either the teams are a little more interesting and the product's a little more interesting. It's not quite like cell phones these days. I don't know what everyone carries, but between an iPhone, a Motorola, a HTC, a Huawei, 95% of the parts are exactly the same. I don't know mm-hmm. if anyone knows that. It's really the UI that makes the difference. You're, you're destroying that, the illusion, it, David. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I hate, oh, the, the I hate to break it to everyone. <laughs> I just yeah, slammed my phone on the ground just now. The same. Yeah, so you're telling me that there is not exclusive parts in there completely, so now I'm not special anymore. We're all just the exactly. same, David. Well, David would say the We're same thing waiting. for the PlayStation and the Xbox and some things in the Switch. There's probably a lot of things in there that are very similar and probably uh, made the same um, places. The Switch. Um, I, you know, and, and, and that to me, is, and that's what I was going to say, I think one of the big differences is in the cell phone world, and certainly the PC world, I mean, the PC did this 20 years ago, right? Everything just got monetized and a la carte. So if you want to make a mid-tier, this is what you put in it. If you want to make a high-tier, this is what you put in it. 
cell phones, it's just because it's evolving so quickly, seems interesting. But the truth is, that, yeah, everyone's using the same exact Qualcomm Snapdragon. Everyone's using the exact same Samsung display. Everyone's using the exact Semco camera. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it, it gets kind of boring. And now, each phone has its, you know, uniqueness that you have to do some really cool engineering on. Because it's like, oh, in order to do the ID where it's borderless or with the Samsung where it wraps around the side, you know, you got to put in ten like there's a lot of antenna work and a lot of flex work and battery. And so there, there's a lot of hardcore engineering, but the parts are very similar. Well, on the console side, including Switch, Sony and that kind of stuff, we may share some of the same vendors. Like, you know, it's not a surprise that AMD going to be in yeah. both mm -hmm. consoles, but mm -hmm. they are not <laughs> the same. As in, we do a lot of software firmware work in conjunction with AMD um, you know, the way we're going to use SSD is different than they are. You know, like, like all these Ooh, things we're going to do that, that, that are out. <laughs> no, I mean, we use different vendors. And, and so all it is is in order to. But you're saying it's platform, not just coming down to different vendors as to what makes it different, correct? Or is it actually yeah, different in do. terms of the implementation? Uh, both. I mean, both. Everything's just a little bit different. Is it? And so we do a little more custom than, than. And when I say custom, it's just because the way we do our dash or our home and even the way our games are written, like, like how an Xbox game is written versus Sony game are different. And so we mm -hmm. have to do things slightly differently. That's mm -hmm. all. It does. It's not because I get, it's not always because you get more performance or a better feature. Sometimes it's because it's cheaper. Sometimes um, I get power, better power, power consumption. Sometimes, you know, it's trade-offs like I want this or that. And so way at this stage, we are far more still custom and non off the shelf than cell phones or PCs. That, but again, that's not. It's it's just because that's what we want to do for our titles. And that's Especially with this system. generation, like, no. would it be fair to say that this generation of consoles, with the Series X, I mean, you are, you've got uh, quite a bit of custom stuff in there that maybe you know before you might not have had. Well, every, I mean, in know, terms of how much you've gone out of your way to get the most performance out of this thing, you you know, we know you guys are going hard here. Yeah, we're definitely going hard in the fact of every ounce counts, right? I mean, mm -hmm. like everything we're doing now, but I, I wouldn't say it's all the different what we've done in the past. I mean, it, well, I'm sorry, for generational changes. Sometimes with like the S and the, the, the X, you know, like because those are like dot fives and point ones and whatever you want to call them. They're upgrades to a current mm -hmm. uh, sock or, or, or the like, but... This one, because it's a generational change, is obviously a lot more custom than was like the S. But that's yeah. just because it's a, it's Gen Nine. I mean, it's a whole new gen, so everything changes. Versus when you do like the Dot Fives, you know, you may not change everything, but the things you change, you spend a lot of time on. With Series X, you are basically you're taking the current technologies of the, of the time. It is part of that Gen Nine technology group, right? The SSD, for instance, right? You guys have confirmed it. Ray tracing, you guys have confirmed it. Um, you know, things that are of today and you are creating the best box you can for X amount of dollars. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the problem is everyone wants the latest and greatest. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's been said in here, I've said it, Tim Dog is on, I've said it on his show, like, Moore's Law is, is dead. <laughs> I, you know, no, everyone I'm wants a hundred gig of RAM. And I want a million gig of RAM, David. Yeah, right. Randy's gonna get mad at you. Everybody now. wants a hundred gig of RAM. I don't think anyone understands how. I mean, go to your PC store and go buy RAM. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, sixteen <laughs> gigabytes of it, like 120, 150 bucks, right? I mean, yeah. and that's but from yeah, the consumer wants, side. Yeah. If if I could ask you a quick question, uh, when gamers finally find out the uh, you know, the specs of this system and see you know uh, some software on action on this system, do you expect gamers to be blown away? Oh, well, I always do, but I'm also a nerd. <laughs> also yeah, he's, he's, he's modest. He's being so nice David right now. Modest. We know. David's we know. I, I mean, you, you're I, modest. I can say the same thing about the new Switch, like Switch Lite. My kid oh, wanted no, no, you can't, David. Oh. Stop like, playing oh, nice. That's awesome, so like, Dave. I don't, I don't care who you are. I mean, I, I, I'm the kind of person that, that's blown away. And, and I'm also a content guy. I mean, at the end of the day, there's things that new gens of anything are. The whole point is to bring it. To me, it's it's to it's it's to add something that wasn't there before. Mm -hmm. Again, we're we're in an er generation where we're constantly going to say more 4K or more. I mean, <laughs> FPS is a big deal and these kinds of things. But but to be more 4K, we could have battles of native and checkerboard and all these different ways of doing 4K. But the average person can't even tell the difference. 
Yeah. So, I mean, it, yeah. It, it's <laughs> awesome. But there, so when I say when I say the new gen stuff, there's things that some people are are really harping on on things like 8K or 4K, and you're like, eh, but there's other things we're gonna do that to me are the quintessential difference that will make Gen 9 gaming. Because to me, reads. the difference of what makes a Gen isn't the sock. What makes a Gen is how the games are actually playing, mm-hmm. as in like how they're written, what they're capable of. I think with some of the stuff we're going to do in this gen, you'll have new genres of titles, Ooh. not just new games. And, I'm not, and that's not a say that, that that's a personal Stranding. opinion. I'm just like, it's okay, David. It's okay. <laughs> just keep going. I get what you're saying. Stranding. Yeah, the, the not... idea there is you, that is what makes a gen to me. A gen. I mean. If you really go back and look at the gems, people think it's the sock or or the what it's capable of or how it's to me it's it's the games and what the pixelation can do and things like that. So it mm-hmm. it's how the developer the way I think of it is is like we all love the movie Top Gun. Imagine if like CGI and all these things were super huge when Top Gun was out and how badass that would have been. <laughs> but the thing is it was still a great movie without it, right? So the title was still great. But all of a sudden CGI made it where you have movies like Transformers or one of my kids the other day, like Mog, Mog- Mogli or whatever, where it's the Jungle Book. Where Mowgli? Like, it, <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you're like, you're, like, you're like, what? what is this tiger or panther thing talking? I'm like, is that an animation? Is someone draw? Like, I don't even know what's going on anymore. You're saying it looks so, so real that people don't really know how it's done, but it's, uh, it's a thing. No, yeah, and I, so like the whole point is it's a whole new way of showing movies that were never there before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I got a question for you, David. So you brought up like the mobile space that you worked on, how you said like pretty much everything's like 95%. Of all things, mobile. Yeah, like you, you brought that up and you said that it didn't really like, there's not a lot of like engineering cool stuff. Is that a reason why you went to like kind of the Xbox? Because you said it's so different and custom that did like the Xbox Series X help you like push your creative juices i guess like did you get creative with it a lot or did you do a lot of things that you've never done before like challenging yourself well okay first of all to be fair because i'm sure there's a lot of my friends that work (laughs) on mobile phones i don't want to offend there is a lot of badass engineering in the mobile phone world oh yeah the difference is it happens it happens further upstream like the people that make the displays really cool technologies people that make the new batteries really cool technology like so what it became was my job is more of an a la carte assembler like i'd say like oh i want that display that battery and we'd put it together mm. so it, it, it wasn't as much about like now i spent what i love now what i do now and i didn't used to do was i spend more time saying like this is a technology i should develop versus like a great example today like Hey, it's a power cord. Eh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> who cares? But at the same time, the power unit that goes in these boxes, like on X and S, when we made them internal, there's external. You know, like mm. that was really cool technology. Like no one told us how to do that. No one told us what to do. We went out and we did that. You even made and sure so, like, the oh, cord from one worked on the other, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, the compatibility part to the end user. But for me, as an engineer and my st- and my team, that this is what we do. We are, this industry is not at the point yet where we're assemblers. You know, we, we're not building rectangles. We're building, we're still doing most of our work is custom. And so it's just where it is in the stream. Like I said, if you're a vendor making cameras, bat, like battery packs, displays, that's where the cool tech is. So if you're at Samsung, they're making really cool displays. But Motorola is just assembling them. Mm-hmm. I mean, once again, not to make fun, there's still a lot of great engineering that goes on. There's somebody here that works at Motorola Mor- 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 in the chat. He's like, come on, leave me alone. <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, that's what I mean. Like, it's still badass. Like, like, <laughs> like, it's great engineering. It's just for my role that takes a product from beginning to end. It There wasn't as much of the fun upfront work of like, what does the field want? How do I create a space? Versus saying, "Here's your space. Find a way to fit it." Well, we can't, we can't, so we can't have more cell phone talk from David Preen while he's on the show. I mean, <laughs> more no cell more phone cell talk phone. than than Xbox talk. I mean, <laughs> people don't know what goes That's into some of these to talk about it. I know, yeah. but I mean, even with the I, Xbox One X, right? You can talk about something like that, and we can maybe use some perspective. You guys eliminated like sixty plus bottlenecks from the silicon of the sock in the Xbox One X, and you actually designed that chip to get rid of bottlenecks that are in popular engines today, right? <laughs> He's like, "What? <laughs> okay." I what did tr- you ask? He, basically, you guys designed Xbox One X's GPU, the silicon there, around current existing bottlenecks that were in the original Xbox One, etc., right? You got rid of and eliminated bottlenecks through the silicon itself, or were you not part of the team oh, yeah. at the time that did that? 
Uh, I mean, I wasn't really on, obviously, the silicon that's done. We have a team that specializes in that, of course. And, but we, we establish what we need to fix, if that's your point. But the team itself is works directly with AMD and all the stuff that, that we do there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that, 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 that's what it was about. I mean, X was, uh, X was a great product. X was how do you take – it was almost like optimization of what you had. You had this great product in S. And he basically said, what do I have to do for relatively low increase to the end user? How can you, how can you improve it that much? And the team did a great job of, of, I think that's your point, is we squeezed every ounce of juice out of that rock to make it as incredible as we could. And that, that to me is what's a lot of fun, is that we didn't do on the cell phones. The cell phones were going so fast that like every nine months you were on a new product. Mm-hmm. Versus the consoles, we get a little more time and you can perfect it. Um, and that's actually one of my fears is that one day, I don't know if this is coming, but one day is that consoles will start turning really quick too. And mm. that's kind of unfortunate because you want it, you want to perfect it, especially for something like games. And so I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad what X was. Like it literally was taking the generation of the one and squeezing that last drop to me to make it, the best console it could possibly be. It added a lot of life to that to this generation, in my opinion. But with how capable something like Series X is going to be, you know, Zen 2, all the stuff that's been confirmed, we know it's going to be rocking a ton of power, no matter if the power targets are right or not, right? If they come out to be hit or not, we know there's a lot of juice there. Would you say this is probably going to be the most future-proof console you guys have ever made in terms of balance? I mean, that's what I would think. Uh, you can answer that. I mean, thing. I can yeah, oh, I can't really answer that, but... Ah, come on. Dave, you say Xbox Series X, good. You're playing it very it's, safe, it's, but it's I understand. I understand. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, we don't want to put pressure on you. We, we're just try, we just going to have to get an idea of what we can ask you and what we can't. But yeah. I mean, there's a lot that I, we know, I, and we watch closely, you know? Well, it'll all unfold, but I have a question for, for David that I'm sure he can... <laughs> and that is, um, you talked about uh, on the other podcast. You talked about concept to delivery, and how you the Xbox team has is basically have taken this project Series X um, from the beginning, the start, from the conceptual point of it, and you're going to take it through the end. Now, one of the misconceptions is is that uh, I see a lot of Xbox fans saying that the Panos team is involved with this. Um, is is it is it true to say that it's just Xbox handling this and uh, Panos and his team is not really involved with this, um, with this whole situation with Series X, uh, or are you guys doing concepts to delivery like uh, you said? He can't say Tim. Um, yeah. <laughs> um it, it's an interesting question because I, I know where it actually came from. It came from Tom Warren and those guys, which which, which it was a great comment. It was a great question. Um. The, uh, we, we, as in the hardware team, so the Xbox team, meaning software, platform, games, titles, all that stuff, has always reported to Phil. We actually, the hardware team, were always a separate team that reported to Panos because we're a hardware team, and there is um, streamlining processes when it comes to factories, vendors, parts, price negotiations, all that kind of stuff works better when you work larger volume and larger company. And since we were a hardware program, it worked good that we were there. Now, when people say design, uh, the hardware engineering team of the Xbox has always been the Xbox hardware engineering team. So someone that actually makes the Surface doesn't, as in designs like, I don't know, <clears throat> let's, let's say like the motherboard, is not the same team. It never has been. Now, where, where it gets confusing sometimes is the term design, meaning industrial design. So we, as in one company, have one design ID team. Now, we have a part of that team that is dedicated to Xbox. and always. So if you've ever heard Carl Edbetter and all them that are you know, people that are really famous in our group, mm-hmm. um, that's the team that officially still technically reports into Panos. But there are people that have only ever worked on Xbox. So I mean, I, Carl's worked on other products because he's been here forever. But the past 15 years, that's all he's worked on. And so we have other people under Carl that only work on Xbox, but they officially report to Panos. Seems but, confusing. Uh, 
Yeah, and hey, welcome to corporate structure. <laughs> um, it's all Shed Matrix Org. But so I don't even think that like Carl's team has always been heavily involved. And when the original designs and what we were going to build, we were part of Panos' team. So it's hard to say we're not. But I don't want anyone to think like we are one company. There are things we're doing like, hey, wouldn't it make sense to put Game Pass on PCs? And everyone's like, of course it would. So now we do. Well, who makes great PCs? The Surface team. So, of course, we, we're working with them on game, you know, in game bar of how the new game bar looks came from from the from the Xbox team to help the Surface team. So, in general, we, we work back and forth. So I don't want ever to think like, oh, like back and forth. We either do or don't work well with them or because we're designing it, we're going to do it differently. Like, we're, we've always been the same team. We always will be the same team because we're one company. Mm -hmm. The difference now is just we report to Phil just <laughs> It's it's just company organization and matrix. That's that's all it was. It's one it's, big it's company a where, of a ton of different divisions that have their you know everyone's kind of doing their thing, man. Yeah. Hey, I, yeah. I got and a I, question. Um, a su there's a super chat that was asking a question to David. May you might not be able to answer this at all, but he's asking: Will physics and AI be a focus in the Series X? Come on. Yeah, I mean, Come. physics always is. Ah, uh, yes. AI is, is a Microsoft thing. So say, I mean, Azure, right? So, I mean, everything runs in the cloud. Azure's, it's nothing new. Azure's all in on AI. And so AI is kind of a broad term meaning. And, and I, whoever asks a question, I'm sorry if I'm getting too general. But, I mean, AI at a high level, of course. That would be the bad AI boy live. Yeah, yeah, AI at the low level of what am I thinking today? And it's going to download some game I've never heard of and say, you may like it. Is it going to work like that day one? I think it means uh, like game based AI, like, Hey, how good is the AI going to be? Will it learn and adapt or, you know, something like that. It's more of the video game that's side. I mean, like, that's the title stuff. And I guarantee it will one day. I, I don't have, if, if that's not my gig to know exactly how deep and all that will be. But I know as a company, we are politically and socially, heavily involved in ai meaning before anything gets too big you have to start there's all you know there's a whole eco and political part to all of it too of how deep you go with ai yeah exactly <laughs> i am not gonna be the guy who's responsible for skynet how about that <laughs> john connor coming back to kill me uh, well you know hey we've seen articles where people have Was those that time what was about tonight <laughs> 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 no, I mean, and not, and not to knock whoever asked the question. It's a legit question, and the pro and the, the, the default answer is, of course, every industry is going towards AI. I would love to see, like, you get more involved on, I think all titles, AI or not, I don't care if I have to type stuff in, I don't care if I have to set up profiles, but any game that's tailored to your personal belief, you know, how you want to play it, is always a good thing for me. So I think, I think we'll definitely d dive into that. I just don't know how soon or how fast or hmm. what level. Um, looks like a picture of an Xbox One X just kind of leaked on Twitter. Looks pretty yep, cool. It's yeah. got a bunch of like uh, circular holes for the uh, for intake there. I know you guys only have one fan on the thing at the top. That's been confirmed by Phil, I think. Um, you know, I, I have a question. What is that rectangular slit, uh, that slot at the back? It looks like a Ooh. service port or something. Now, I got a question, though. Like, power usage here, it looks like it's got a the same kind of uh, figure eight power input pin there as an Xbox One X. Uh, Wouldn't uh, what um, got leaked? It, Somebody leaked a picture of the back and the very front of the Xbox Series X prototype. Um, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, well, they originally did that and it was wrong, so we don't know if it's official. Um, this is where I think Dave, it looks pretty uh, official. Ghost is going out the window. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think from looking at the box, we can we can make some common sense, you know, thoughts on it. At the back, there should be some type of vents at the back as well, maybe underneath it. Um, I, I think the render that we are seeing is probably close to the final thing, but man, I, I know there's you can't comment on it. It'd be nice if you could. <laughs> Did you notice there's like a disc type uh, spacer at the bottom? It looks like. Yeah, I yeah. On that angle. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that, but I, I don't like like I said, I don't know how accurate that's gonna be. But I, I I'm pretty sure at the back of the system is gonna be something. that hmm. system to me, when I when I first saw that system, it, it screamed power to me. And yep. it and it screamed well cooled. And the reason why it screamed power to me, because it was well cooled. So 
Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the system. I can't wait. I, I wish you could say so much more. I know. I'll just... send David the picture. <clears throat> I'll send David. Uh, well, David's oh. driving. We don't want to. We don't want to hear him doing yeah. a flip <laughs> off a guardrail. He, he could be driving a Tesla. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, do you guys get nervous when? Uh... When it's coming up to like a launch like this thing, or do you guys like hang back to get excited, or uh, what's it like? Like this, this is a huge launch. Sorry, I'm looking at Tim. Oh. <laughs> ah, he's got it. Look at Tim Dog's Twitter. <laughs> I'm at a stoplight. He's like, I gotta stop. I uh, am. Yeah, like, how are you guys talking about the bag? What was the question? Confirm. Hey, look at this that picture, David, and, and tell us what you think about that picture, David. I uh, can't see while I'm driving. Can't... I just saw oh, somebody okay. did post something. All right, well, we'll, we'll let <laughs> you have that well one. Well played, sir. Well played. <laughs> um, yeah, what, what was the question, though? Sorry. I was just asking, do you guys get nervous when you uh, get ready to launch a product like this or uh, excited? or? Well, I mean, it's crazy because, you know, we're several months away and everybody wants to know right now when they can get the console. So, like, what's it like for your team dealing with that? Oh, everybody's super. I mean, we, it's super. Super exciting, super scary, and I try to tell. You know, what's funny is you can always tell the people that have done a lot of big launches for people that haven't, because like a lot mm -hmm. of people get really nervous, gonna like it, not like it. And, you know, what are people gonna say about you know? And I, I'm gonna take like a lot of people take take things personally, and you're like, look, you can never make everyone happy. Like, this is a big launch. There's a couple of big launches I've had in my life. This will be one of them. Like, I am really excited for this one just because launching a generation is something I haven't done before. And so I, I think I think this is this this will be the coolest thing I can do. So I'm super excited, but you know you're always worried that I miss something. Is is, is probably the the big one that like like did I forget something? <laughs> did I not put the feature? And <laughs> did I, I forget have? port? How long have you worked on this product? <laughs> yeah. From the uh, beginning? We don't ever we don't ever say, but years. I mean, it's been going on for years. I mean, I mean, I was like, you could say from the beginning, or did you come in while they were rolling, or? Um, I was in when it was probably still relatively young. The, the difference is like the sock, you know, we, we start work on sock work independent of a console necessarily. Mm -hmm. Um, because it, it, you know, there's so, you know, just ideas like, like what's the, what's, what kind of nanometer technology is even capable, you know? So, the, so I wasn't involved in that stuff because that, that gets a little too far back. But <laughs> if you talk about even where concepting of what it should be and what the industry is going to do and yeah, I mean, it, 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 I, I've been on it since most of that part of it. So this is your first console generational launch, right? You were there during the X obviously. Um, and, yeah. and I'm just thinking like what has already been confirmed about this thing. And this is confirmed, right? Zen two SSD, virtual memory pools, right? I have an idea of the implementation. I've talked to some other people on the team. Um, and the, the power, regardless, even if we lowball it, is still ridiculous compared to today. The overall capability compared to today. This is something a lot of people would be very, extremely excited to hear about and see. Uh, but I get that you can't say a whole lot right now. Is it possible maybe after we get more information you want to come back on and talk about specifics, something like that, you know? It's obviously yeah. up to you. Yeah, yeah. When, when there's when when the, when the specifics are released, and of course, you know, the specifics are released because for lots of reasons, right? Like, like we're a business here, and so of course, everything wants to be released in, in, in a timely manner that makes sense that we get to tell our own story and, and everything like that. And yeah. Of course. Um. But but of course, yeah, yeah. I mean, like for anybody that knows me and I, my past products, like I don't mind telling history stories like they're fun like a lot of people enjoy those so mm -hmm. we'll do a lot more later that's so awesome. we should we should we should book you in about two months then right <laughs> <laughs> uh, tim dog's already planning uh you know the e3 party and stuff yeah <laughs> yeah well, yeah we'll be doing that again th that was uh i mean at the i i mean i've talked about like uh, an interview you and mikey Barr have done together or no that was jason ronald um, I have, uh, I mean, either way, we, we cover pretty much everything here and, and you've kind of been one of those guys behind the scenes that, that I don't think you get enough uh, credit and attention where you should, you know, because you, you're holding so much back and even walking things back because you're like, hang on a second. I can't, you know, maybe I'm going a little too far. I get it. Um, 
but again, just knowing what's in what 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 kind of capability is there, I'm I'm just it's crazy that you're even this calm about it, honestly. Uh, but uh, I I can tell that you you're holding things back, and that's probably not easy for you. It's your first no, console launch. No, I mean, I mean, I'm I, sure you're excited. Yeah, I would love to talk. I mean, I'd love to talk more. I love I love to tell you all the stuff we're doing because yeah, I mean, it, to me, it's extremely exciting. Like I, I love everything we're doing, and, and everyone on the team is too. Like. We're building the right product at the right time. I think I think this is great. So I mean, mm-hmm. we're we're super excited. Awesome. And we, and we would never yell at you like that guy at CES did. I know that uh, you. Had to... uh, yeah, yeah, guy, that's yeah, that's right. Escalated quickly. Yeah, yeah, that was, the guy that escalated, escalated so quickly. So yeah, I mean, no, explain I to the you. explain to people listening like what happened. Somebody wanted to know some information you wouldn't tell them, and and they ended up saying that. Asshole. Yeah, like. Uh, I don't want to go too far into it. Basically, but, somebody didn't get what they wanted from you, and they were kind of a douche about it. And that's definitely not us or the chat here. You know, we're very respectful of everything that you. Yeah, uh, it was people. I, I don't know. In a span of like, it, not that people know who I am, but people just know maybe just enough who I am. Or I was walking around, and people were just like, "Hey, like, tell us what's going on." And you're like, "I can't." And they're like, <laughs> "Oh, but you said you can't." Like, then they'll trap me into a no means yes, and, and you're like, ah. "Guy." Like, <laughs> was like why you gotta be such a fucking asshole about it and i was like oh. i looked at him like i'm sorry are you, are you like the editor of wall street journal like who are you like oh. yeah, you're gonna scoop you're gonna scoop the series x like as so I, I was like whatever and then the, then the, like one of his friends was like hey box a bunch of asshole and i got just going i'm like so I, I was so pissed, like, and the guys I was with, I was literally with the CEO of a mid-sized, vet, I mean, like, a billion-dollar company. <sighs> like, and this guy's calling me a fucking asshole in the middle of the floor. I'm like, Jeez. really? What a douchebag. So, like, like, so I, I posted that, and I shouldn't have, because it shouldn't come off that way, because it came off wrong. And, like, what it was was, I understand, like, I felt really bad. You know, 300, 400 some responses of, like, I'm not going to spend that kind of money without knowing what I'm going to I'm like, yes, I get that. The argument was so far in advance because I mean, even like a year ago, people would beat me up for specs, and you're like, <laughs> "Wait, like you just get tired of it at a point, you know? You just get tired of it. I get it." But I don't. I, I really don't. I, I think what it was is I was upset because I was literally with the CEO of a billion dollar plus company, and someone had the nerve to call me. And you're like, "All right, look." I mean, and then and then I, right away I got my PR, and I was like, "I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's my bad." Like. So ba- you, David Preen, the the lead guy, pretty much the hardware there, is with the CEO of a billion dollar company. We need to figure out what company that is because we can connect the dots, David. We're going to connect the dots. Actually, if you want to know the truth, the guy had nothing to do with anything. I'm ah like, man, just somebody I know. Well, All right, well, well David, that, this will nice never, try, David. This can never, <laughs> like, honestly, we can prevent this from happening again if you just. Tell us all the specs right all now. All right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, either way, David. I mean, I would yeah, guess. I would guess you. that uh, twenty, thirty thousand people will hear kind of your side of the story here on the show. And um, you know, either way, we, we, you're a nice guy. We can tell you're not. You're not a mean guy. No, I mean, no. I purposely went on there right away, going like, "My bad." Like, I don't mind answering questions all day long, and I like, I, I love, I love. I'm here for the industry, not for you know, like. You know, it's just, it's just, it was bad timing is what that one was. I was like, you gotta be kidding me, but. You see this dude with gold yeah, shoes I, next to me? All right, maybe ask me later. Yeah. Also, yeah, two come, people. Well, go ahead. No, I was going to say, also, two people just got to use common sense that to realize that obviously you can't reveal the full specs until the system is officially <laughs> revealed. Like, it's, how's that so hard to understand? I don't get it. Yeah, because well, when Microsoft do reveal those you know, specs, man, excited. that's like, that's like. Uh, when they finally reveal and drop these specs, they are counting. And the reason it's, they're so sealed up about it is because when they do drop the specs, it's going to be such big news and, and impressive stuff yeah. that, you know, I think uh, that is what something they're planning on not getting out there ahead of when they intend on it being. So, I, I mean, think, we get it. I think, I think yeah. the greatest thing, too, is the fact David that. David said, yeah, by the way, if you didn't hear him. When they do yeah. finally drop drop those specs, David can come back and, and confirm yeah. a lot of things, and it'll be fun to hear what this thing can actually do at that moment. So, mm-hmm. David, that, that, that'll be cool. Guys. Yeah, David's one of the good guys that doesn't uh, take a take home and uh, post it on Twitter. David, you have one of them at home. Of course, he has a Series X at home. You could say I that. Next, next, next. Next. What's your address, David? Next question. I, SSN. I forget your... who it was. Yeah. I, 
I post. I don't know. Man, I if one of you guys like. I post as soon as Phil posted a picture of the of the, the chip. Oh yeah, you yeah, had the, the, I, the array of ten. I chips. posted one right after that, and somebody called me out on Twitter that they were like, "Oh, you know, that's just Phil's nice way to flex." And I was like. Where do you think Phil got it from? <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> well, I was just surprised that you had a bunch of SOCs in like a Fig Newton you know, like sleeve. <laughs> like a whole sleeve you want a Fig Newton? We They're get, shaped like we Series get, X. We, we get samples for test. It's so we can do some basic stuff. But what it is is it's just like before. We we make we have dummy ones just to do sizes and package counts and things like like those aren't real ones. I, this is probably a question. <laughs> this is probably a question you can answer. Um. Are you satisfied with everything that's happening in testing right now? You can't answer that. Uh, I can't answer that, but... Damn it! But, no, uh, everything sucks. Like, we're just, you know, like, come on. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not that sucks. I mean, no, but he kind of I mean, did. The question, I mean, there's parts of it, to your point, like, like, no, and once again, this is a hardware question that's not uncommon. Like, of course, there's things that are failing, and that's what we're fixing. That's why when people ask for specs, a lot of times, you're like, look, yeah, we know generally what the spec should be, but we do make trade-offs. Like a great example is if something eats too much power and gets hot and the fan is too noisy all the time, we may declock it a little bit. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying we're having that problem, but things like that do happen over time. So when people sometimes are like, hey, we need a, a, one of the reasons you don't want to specs too far in advance is they do change. Yeah. Now, like the big things don't change, but little things do. But there's a lot of people there that, that look at every – not. <laughs> who am I speaking to that look at every little detail that leaks in the public and, you know, if it changes, you know, they won't buy the bot, but you know, you, you know, I mean, as a whole, we're the project where we expect it to be. I mean, it's, it's, it's doing, it's, we're, we're doing really well. We're really, we're, like I said, I'm still extremely happy with where we are and what we're doing <clears throat> as a whole. Hey, I mean, hey David, uh, the chat you. would like to know what kind of games are you into? Good question. Uh, you know, I used to play a ton, a ton of RPGs. Um, like I had a lot of friends that were at Bethesda, so I did a lot of like Oblivion, Skyrim back in the day. Um, then I got way more into FPS, you know, so Halo and and everything else. But I, I've gotten old. Uh, I can't it. play PvP like I used to. <laughs> so now I play a lot more like <laughs> I play a lot more of the looter shooters. Like I've been playing a lot of like Borderlands and. I'm playing Star Wars now. I'm playing it's such a good game, isn't it? Star Wars is so good. Oh, oh my god, it's so good. I didn't know oh. it was gonna be that good. Yeah. Like everyone told me. Yeah, I Fall Fallen Wars Order is so great. Far. Fallen Order is really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 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 pretty legit. What I played the other, oh last week I played the Goose game in like one day. <laughs> <laughs> everyone told me how fun it was. I was like, Yeah, hey, you're not kidding. This hey, is actually a fun game. Shout out to Dron Zua and the Super Chases. Give me the specs. It ain't gonna happen, Dron. We've tried. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, again, I mean, I get it. You got you got what you set out to do, and and hopefully you guys are really really close to that. Um, and you know, the the, the I think some people are thinking about, and I know you're only one part of one team, of many of one company, but you know, Microsoft are really set up to, and I said this on Blam Show uh, for the chat. Microsoft are really set up well for the future. I think, unlike anyone else, I think with X Cloud, it's a, its ability to leverage not only things that will be in game pass but your own software and be able to play that locally and remotely you know carry your save back and forth combined with what will be i think the most powerful console in 2020 which will be the series x and then you've got you know some other options out there i think uh, you guys have things set up better than anyone else and no one is even close in my opinion for the global scale that you guys are prepared to operate on with things like xcloud um that you've got to have some kind of confidence going into this upcoming generation that, that kind of the pieces are coming together, right? Oh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I'm in it for the, like I said, the ecosystem as a whole. I love gaming. Like, I don't care. I, I know we get into about Xbox, Sony, Nintendo, PC for that matter. I play on everything. Mm-hmm. As the hardware team, and we're building what we're building on that, we're working with Phil and everything. I'm a big proponent of what Phil's doing as a whole. Like, yeah. I, I think he's got a great strategy, and I think everything he wants to do with, you know, who we're, what we're doing, what we're not going to do. I'm super excited about the future as a whole, for, for gaming, that is. I, I think, and I, I'm not the only one to say this, I'm sure other people have said this that are way more important in the industry than I am, that you're going to see more over the next year or two years than you've seen over the last 10 to 15. 
as in changes in the industry, mm. not just for Xbox. That's what yeah. I like to hear. So, That's like, like let me ask you, let me ask you a question uh, based off of that. Like things like Horizon Zero Dawn, we know they're coming to PC. That's just one example of you know the way the industry is changing. Would you say that's fair? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, who? I, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I, I, I'm not proving anything Sony does, obviously. And I, I was, I was floored when I saw that. I was mm -hmm. like, really? <laughs> After everyone, you know, gives so much trouble about going to PC versus yeah. console and all that. That's why, once again, is like, I have a certain affinity for console gaming, but I also, I actually started as a PC gamer, so I, I still love my PC gaming, and my setup is still both. But there's a reason I do console gaming and there's reasons I do PC yeah. gaming, even in my same living room. But the yep. idea that boundaries are going to be gone soon. And again, yes. to that original discussion of leaving people behind and all that, imagine if you really had to go out and buy a new graphics card every six months just to keep up. That would suck. Like, it, it's, just, it's, it's just not sustainable for people that even have that kind of disposable cash. It it's doesn't still, happen. I mean, good yeah. yeah, if I had to go change, like... I mean, I, I, okay, even at work, I could go, like, get a card to say it's for testing reasons. <laughs> <laughs> even I'm too lazy to change it that often. I mean, oh. we've like, seen the stats. Like, the, the large, large, large majority of PC players, you know, they have, um, they build their PC and they hold on to it for as long as they can, really. It's expensive. Yeah. And, and consoles yeah, are going to last, yeah. you know, five years. Seven you know, years, five, five seven years. years. Yeah. Seven to yeah. ten years, even. Yeah, 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 yeah we have... Yeah, go look at the stats. How many people still play on 360? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, there's a lot of dudes that ain't even upgrading yet. Uh, there's yep. a lot, man. I hear and it. Too. And so, but, but, but to me, the thing is, it, it, it's services. The way games are written, not just the way that, not just the content, but even the way they're written to make them more useful, like like more upfront. So like download speeds, ISPs, you know, all these things converging is going to change gaming. Just like Preach. mobile phones had that massive change at one point, like seven years ago, too, or eight years ago, when, when 4G and 3G, I mean, 4G really changed everything for cell phones. I think you're about to see this yeah. this this big shift in the market. And, and some things may monetize things. I don't know. I mean, like, some of them may not be the best thing you've ever heard of, but I'm saying I think the industry is going to go through a big, the biggest change in the next two years than it has in the past last 10 to 15 years. Would, yeah, would, David, would you, we've been saying that we've been uh, here you, on rdx we've been saying that for like the last couple of years we've been saying that we see i mean as a consumer we can see a lot of the changes that are being done now and that are going to come forward in into the future we're going to see a lot of this industry just become a, a whole different animal man super facts um, for for yeah. us we we see it as uh you know no boundaries in some respects and we also see the other side of it the business side of it where you guys um also can make more money doing this you know and, and going by reaching more people right reaching more people. yeah that's what, I was, yeah. that's what i'm about to say would you say that the the pc market and the console market there are two different bases like there are two different consumers some of them no no i mean uh, i mean I, I know there's a war always but i mean there, uh, uh, i don't think i never thought there should be i understand why people prefer one or the other and that kind of stuff but what i'm getting about is e even a larger level than that it's, it's not that Xbox is becoming more PC-like or PC is becoming more Xbox-like. My point is, I don't care if you play Nintendo. I don't care if you play Candy Crush on your phone. <laughs> Gaming as a whole is about to make a big shift. Yeah. And I, I, I'm just saying that, yeah, hardware, software, services, titles, content, everything. I think gaming is going to go through a lot of changes of monetization and personalization and socialization. I think all those things are going to take a big swing in the next couple of years just because hardware is more capable, the cloud and services more capable. And that's what I mean. this is not an Xbox thing. This is mm -hmm. Sony has capabilities that never in the, I mean, they're, you know, like they're, you're going to see new, new people like entering the market. You've never even heard of before. I mean, well, I mean, some people have, but like companies like Tencent that aren't even really known in North America very well, that will have a massive presence one day. Yeah. You know, or Amazon, who knows what they're doing and all these kind of, like who know I'm not saying they're all gonna win and they're all gonna do great. No. But uh the, the idea <laughs> is markets will change and then yeah. like you'll see new ways that people try to do things that are a lot more creative. And I think 
I, and, and personally, I think it's for the good. Like, I, I, I think yeah. it's cool for the Honestly, like, I think you I guys are in a better position to compete than, than those guys are because of your already established ecosystem, your install base, your IP, your studios. This, and, and not to mention, like I said, xCloud to, you know, that could essentially yeah. quadruple your user base over the course of a month or two if it, if it all goes right, right? I mean, just yeah. the way that things are so open and, and you can scale these user, user bases across mobile like you can here coming up this year. It's big, and shout out to Wilmy Hood, by the way, with the Super Chat. Hit the like button. If you haven't hit the like button, guys, uh, do so. We've already got uh, about 600 now hitting the like button. Let's try to get up to 1,000 after the fact if we haven't already. And, and two, um, shout out to David for jumping in here and, and talking to us about some of his insights. And that, you know, again, very tight-lipped, but he's got to be. I, I can't stress that, chat. So yeah. we'll try to have him back on after some things have been announced and I'm sure he wants to talk about some things he can't talk about now. Uh, I've also got some other people lined up from uh, the Series X team that want to come on the show. And uh, even Bill Stilwell from xCloud. We can have a conversation with him about some stuff. Great guy. Um, again, though, I mean, he's David. He's talking about hockey. He's talking about hockey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we got we got Seamus uh, Blackley coming on next week as well. Uh, and that's going to be fun. <laughs> he said, ow! <laughs> well, that's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but it'd be good to kind of get some some perspective from even if they're involved or not, you know, they still got a, some knowledge, you know, and that's uh, that's the fun part about it. Uh, but uh, anybody else got any other questions for David? It kind of, I, I, like I said at the beginning, it was, we didn't know for sure if he'd show up, but since he did, it kind of changed all the topics. Uh, any well, last questions for David? Well, I just want to say thanks. Thanks for uh, coming on the show. Thanks for answering uh, the questions. You gave us a little bit of insight to what's going on over there. And uh yeah, we appreciate it, man. I do at least. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. And I, thanks, I, I, I changed your name from Platypus to David, uh, just so you know. Yeah, it's, yeah David. Uh, uh, it's David. It's David. Platypus 8K 8K now. Well, his tw- his his it's name on Twitter is David. Like- his name on Twitter is David Eight K. So that's why I changed it to that. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I'm guessing that's a new Discord account it or something. It is my gamer tag. It is my gamer tag. That's why. This is gamer tag. There you go. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, he's got, he's got like a thousand invites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, enjoy well, those. It's on my Twitter, so I mean, I was always surprised how many people are like, "Hey, what's your gamer tag?" I'm like, "It's on my Twitter." Why? Why, why is your uh, <laughs> Why is your gamer tag your Twitter David Eight K? Oh, because do you remember during last year's E3, there was the talking head video for Project Scarlet? He's a talking head so video. It was like this. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we call it i don't know yeah it's, i it's remember classic, David. like 20 people say so. so like the first time they show me on that video yeah is they're, they're i forget who we went before me but literally they're they're like saying like everyone would say like a sentence or two and then they'd switch the head and then it would be <laughs> someone else saying a sentence or mm-hmm. two when they got to me the very first time i all i said was ak and then it went to the next person so it was literally like a third of a second. And all I said was AK. So it took about three seconds for somebody on Twitter to already post their like Dave AK Prime. You know, like, oh, well, man. man. And just for clarification, and so just of- you're not saying that this thing's going to run games at 8K. You're saying that, you know, HDMI 2.1, you can kind of, you can display and run on 8K TVs and all that good stuff, right? Like, that's not your target, obviously. Yeah, they haven't, they haven't said anything yet. Okay. That, all right. So. Well, I'll leave you to that. Uh, it is on the chip. But no, that's that's the only reason I was AK. Was he said it is on the chip. Joke. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. None of us expected you guys to be targeting AK. AK sixty confirmed. AK five hundred frames <laughs> yeah. for, confirmed. Out there. Shout out to Aaron Green, Greenberg. Uh, but uh, again, we I guess we can call it there unless you guys have anything else. I mean, I think it's been a pretty good, pretty good interesting show with David here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it's been uh, yeah, going up on. It's getting up there uh, about an hour and a half. So. Uh, I'll call it. Uh, shout out to everybody who joined us live. Hit that like button if you haven't. Share it out. Uh, tell a friend. David, I'll tag you on Twitter uh, just so people know that it's the real you, obviously. I like to make sure people know that kind of stuff, and I'll link your Twitter down below. Uh, and again, thanks thanks for uh, showing showing up. Uh, where, where can people find you, David, on Twitter? Uh, D-P-R-I-E-N on Twitter. All right. My, my D and then my last name. All right, cool. Uh, and uh, obviously, you said you've been playing Jedi Fallen Order, stuff like that. Um, usually, I ask people where they can be found and wh- where they've been playing, but you've kind of already talked about that. But again, thank you for uh, joining us, man. You can kind of bail whenever you want. I'm going to just do some outros. Cool. And uh, chat, give David All a right, thumbs guys. up, man. Thanks, Dave. Thanks a lot, yeah. everyone. Give it up Have a great game. night. Thank you, David. Bye. Colt Eastwood.
good it's a good show. Yeah, uh, that it, was. Um, <laughs> I, I can't wait to have him back in a couple yeah, of months. He's really, really cool. He's gonna be a couple, awesome. couple of months. Couple of months. Couple he's of months. He, still there? He, no, he's not here. Um, I think yeah, I might have met him at E3 at like the uh, little party we had. We got together. Um, yeah, you yeah. Got he, I, yeah, he's he's the, he's the real tall one. <laughs> he's the real, real tall one. I think Tim's still here. Dave is not still what? here. No, Tim was no. here. Yeah, yeah, Tim's here. Yeah. Yeah. Tim, his his mic's muted right now. I mean, there's all that stuff he just can't say. It's it's really I rough. No, uh, I, I, you know he's so passionate about the work that their team's doing, and they're not allowed to talk about it. Listen, yeah. David, David just doesn't want to. Uh, obviously, he's he just got his position, and he doesn't want to be that guy that's leaking um, mm-hmm. anything. Um, but on the other hand, you have somebody who is obviously from Xbox that's freaking leaking pictures of the prototype which has a barcode on it and source so uh, whoever did that probably gonna get fired in the next day <laughs> oh what does that barcode do tim well he's got they a track every serial number you can track it yeah. within their database basically Dude, that's what like, we do at work too yeah how, how do you leave the serial number open like that he didn't even blur it it's crazy probably it might it might not have been him can you imagine if it's like he's just yeah. sitting there cooking dinner and his buddy comes over oh shit Bruce's console probably, out of the wall and turns it over probably <laughs> what could happen that's Honestly, it could be some it's some freaking clout chasing person, like you know, who knows? But I, uh, you know, I think yeah, it, they, it, you it, literally it can details. like put that barcode in your database. But that's real. Exactly that's real, guys. That that's thing cool. looks real, especially the space store on the bottom for the uh, for the airflow. Um, yeah, it's like it, a circular space. If you guys notice, yeah. like maybe it's like an open. Hey, dish. Tim, send send it to my inbox. Maybe I didn't see this one. Let me see this. Right, it, the, the reason why I think it's really legit is is that barcode and screen uh, serial number. It, it, it's it's legit. Legit. That screams legit. Yeah, it does look pretty real. Um, let me. Brad uh... Sam's already has a video up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Shout out to Brad Sam's. Yeah, yeah who Brad skipped dinner tonight? Video. All in the name of this leaked photo. Um, <laughs> sit down to eat. Hold on a second. <laughs> Gotta make a video. Oh, uh but either way i mean that's, yeah that's legit that's legit man sure it is, it is. <laughs> indeed oh that's legit wow. yeah yeah brad sam's already has a fucking because name. out of all the renders we've seen we've never seen that uh the spacer on the bottom we've yep. never seen that yeah. that's the first time um so yeah, yeah, yeah. they would have taken a picture of the bottom and the top so that's, you know, that means, that, that that means there's, there's vents in the bottom there for sure. If the Hang on, I'm gonna I'm gonna right. try to get this up on the screen for everyone watching. It's, yeah, it's, it's, I, it's, I'm gonna I do some heard. advanced stuff. That's a dirty yeah. ass series though. Look at all the little. That's specs better on. than watching yeah. your trash. Wash your hands, bitch. Sure. <laughs> I, I had heard about that spacer. It was never confirmed. Exactly. That's so why. being that we see the spacer, it's Kai would say that. I'd say that's definitely real. Um, they know I'm breaking news right here on RDX. Breaking. We're going to show yeah. it right here. <laughs> well, I'm editing a video right now. I'm sure, I'm sure they're on the phone right <laughs> We're now. We're going to try. Zocker's already put out two. <laughs> I made the thumbnails with my feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> oh, my oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> whoever whoever posted this though, they weren't too smart. Like at least cover the serial number. What were you thinking? Yeah. Like I said, it's probably just the person that works there, yeah. man. It's probably some friend or his kid or something. you never know. Or, man. Yeah. or you, you could have had somebody coming through the offices and just snapped a pic. Yeah, that's possible too. Why is it always no. on a rug? These, it's these not always... that. It's you share a picture with a friend and you say, "Please don't share this. It could be my job." Wow. And, your yeah. like, and then his friend's like, "Hey, Jerry, don't share this because <laughs> Tim Jerry's <laughs> job." Exactly. It happens all the time. <laughs> that's the truth. Oh, but you know what? Yeah, are you getting that picture up on the screen? I'm so trying, but drop? why are these leaks no. always on a Hurry rock? up, da- dealer! Damn, all you the have to fuck do up, it. Zalker. Remember Just... when PS? Remember when PS Pro was was released, and they the the, the picture was also on a rug. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it was like the same. I don't know why, picture. but it's not in, showing up. The, the picture's rug. not showing up. Let me try to save it again. But that's it, even that's that dragon layout's dragon even, even the layout. Brad Sams had also put out that layout way before, so that's why I think he's. Yes, he did, and, it, and it's and it's it is accurate to that render that he did put out. Now the, 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 the question that that uh, the dealer was asking um, was a very relevant question. Um, how much could that power cord hold? Well, it is the same power cord, wasn't it? 
Yeah, it doesn't look like. I thought the 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 more power you go up, the is it the higher the wattage, the different cords that you have to go to. Well, like, that's a, that's why I asked him, and I don't know how much he knows because he is a little newer, like you said. But um, I'm sure he knows all this shit. He's just playing dumb on some of it. But, he doesn't want to answer. But anything. the Xbox One S and the and the X have the same power cord, and the the Xbox One X is five almost five times more powerful. Yeah, right. but that's well, just, is, is Xbox One X? Because I haven't looked at it in a while. Is it two prong or three prong? That's, okay, it's two. So what, what is the power? It's just a positive and a neutral. It's just a regular connection to the power supply. Yeah, but is like it, are we else. looking at like a 240 watt power supply? What is it? I, I don't know. Yeah. The X uh, runs on a the guessing. X runs on a 245 watt power supply. I'm and, guessing I'll it's see, like 300 I'll plus. I'll say this though: the the CPU I don't think is going to add too much wattage to the overall system though because if you're looking at the ryzen 4000 mobile ones like they got that shit running at like 15 30 fucking 50 watts they got that shit running it's more really power low, efficient so. than the last yeah. stuff and it's way better usually yeah. when you when you get up there in, in a power supply you got to have that cord be that three prong cord right I yeah mean, yeah yeah but the, the figure eight could still have a three prong cord to, to mm. or it could have a it could have an external power so it could have a pack but i don't know if they, i doubt it yeah, I, I don't think I don't think they're gonna go back to, to... the inter the internal accelerometer, which propagates the endoplasmic reticulum, has what? to be uh, situated <laughs> in the uh, diatonic said, uh, hey? endo endoplaster. Yeah, the uh, the pl plastic. He's like, I'm getting excited. Sounds like the, the DeLorean. Are we going back to the future? What the fuck's yeah, going on here? The one point twenty one gigawatts. Well, guys, I don't really, uh, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I saved the photo, and it's not coming up through OBS. Can you just it's okay. Stay tuned to my video tomorrow morning. It's dropping. <sighs> Can't you just make your desktop a layer in OBS and then have the picture open on the desktop? Well, you yeah, know what? You can um, do that, you can do that dealer. Yeah, you could. You just brute force it. Just force yeah. it in front of just brute, brute force that mother. Force just brute force it, eh? Force it in! I haven't used uh, OBS in like three or four years, but... That's all right. I'll figure. I'll figure it out. Maybe we'll. Uh, I'll, I'll learn it. Uh, in, in well, here, you do time. it while we're doing. No, I'm outros. not doing it. We're getting out of here. Okay, we gotta go. All right. So, uh, gotta, gotta give a shout here. out to everybody who watched us live. Thank you so much. Basically, yeah, it, it looks interesting. It's not gonna blow your fucking mind. Maybe I'll show it in the next video. Maybe Deal show it. I don't know. It's not a huge, huge deal. Nothing confirmed. Shout out to Deal 1100. Right. Leave here. so you can make a video. No, I on. gotta leave because I got. I gotta eat something. I'm gonna die. All right. So again, <laughs> Cold Eastwood. What have you been playing? Where can people find you? The fuck oh, my gosh. I, I went uh, nostalgic and went back to Mass Effect Andromeda and kind of started a new playthrough. And so I might be messing around with that a little bit. I don't know why, but that's what it is. <laughs> but you can find me on uh, Twitter and YouTube at Colt Eastwood. And uh, thanks. A great show. Yes. David Prine is his name. Prine, not Prine. 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 Yeah. Glad he was on. He was super cool, and he's a good sport for uh, us trying to coax him into saying what he shouldn't. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> um, and again, I, if you want to find his Twitter, I'll tag him in the uh, the post or whatever that I do after the shows. D-Batch, what have you been playing? Where people find you, bud? I've been playing a lot of COD, and uh, of course, I'm still playing Jedi, Jedi Fallen Order. I love that game. I love the backtracking, trying to find all the little secrets. Uh, what a fantastic game. I'm really taking my time with it. Um, you guys can yeah, find me on... Are. <laughs> you guys give my because I, I gotta get those COD sessions in, man. COD is like fucking crack this year, man. Um, you guys can find me on Twitter at D underscore batch and of course on YouTube at D Bat. Hey, uh, just for those that missed it at the beginning, we're trying to help out a uh, community member clowns here who's uh kind of uh we have a GoFundMe set up for a family member or uh you know that was basically in a car accident. So if you uh want to contribute it would really help a lot. Check the live chat now. I'll post it and link it under the video after and, of course, in the top comment. But there's the uh, link to the GoFundMe if you guys want. It's, you know, 100%, uh, you know, good dude in the community. If you want to help, uh, throw a few bucks his way. You know, it would really help. So, um, Fonz, what have you been playing, bud, and where people find you? Uh, they can find me at The Grounded Gamer. And, yes, I did change my name here during the show, The Grounded Gamer. You see it right there. So, um, yeah. you can find me on YouTube and uh, subscribe. Watch my videos. Um, anyway, uh, I'm, I've been playing a bunch of stuff through Game Pass. Since everything seems to be getting pushed back, I'm going to have to wait for new games. <laughs> so I'm going back, playing old games. Right now I'm going through Arkham City and having a blast with that. Oh, Not that we know because, you know, you're hiding offline, just like me. Hey, uh, Tim Dog, <laughs> man, what have you been playing? Where can people find you? 
Well, I think I finished up Reach, I think, last uh, week. Uh, since then, I went on vacation. I went to Great, Great Wolf, uh, which is uh, into a water park. Uh, good time with the family. Uh, so really didn't play that much. Kind of been off the grid. Uh, if you can find me uh, on Twitter, it's xcloudtimdog. I'm also here every Tuesday, 8 p.m., RDX. And uh, if you guys could, uh, I know that I haven't donated yet. I am planning to donate. Uh, Italian Clowns is uh, a, a wonderful human being, and uh, the situation with his wife was unfortunate. Uh, so he definitely can use some community help. Um, it's not uh, something that's set up uh, like a cash grab. It's a genuine thing. Uh, so if you guys can, uh, uh, you'll see my my. Uh, I think I'll probably uh, give on Friday. When I get yeah, paid. I think most people here probably have already donated too because we tweeted it out and all that stuff too. So I mean, right. but if, hey, you know, for those that didn't know, there, there you go. The link is in the chat and stuff. Yeah, if you can help out, thanks a lot. And uh, see you guys next week. Yep, uh, Zalker eighty seven. Where could people find you? What haven't you been playing? Uh, <laughs> haven't been playing. Uh, crashing into walls like you have. Uh, mm-hmm. No, I've been. Uh, you can find me at Twitter Zalker eighty seven. And uh, YouTube's Zalker87, obviously putting out videos as much as I can because I enjoy it. And then I've been playing uh, Shadow of War, um, which we'll call it. I'm going to, oh, Battlefield 5 with Obi Wan. We played the new, like, uh, the Pacific campaign thing where Pacific multiplayer was fucking awesome, looked awesome. Uh, I'm going to start my friend Pedro. And then next week is Warcraft 3 Reforged. I'm going to be fucking cracking out on that shit. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, hey, yeah. And, uh, everybody in the chat, you guys are awesome. It was great. Thank you guys again for all the support. You guys were here in droves, and we didn't get a yell from Tim when we hit like 13, 1400. So, Tim, hit them up, man. Come on, hit them with the no. yell. Yeah, 1400. <laughs> <laughs> Stop telling Tim to yell. To all right. Leave Tim alone. Hey, shout out to Gene Samuel uh, in the Super Chess's best gaming podcast, Gospel for the Gamers. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much, man. Um, and I think I got everyone right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got all you guys. Yeah, I've been playing uh, a little bit of Forza Motorsport, working on a pretty big Forza video right now. Um, ob- obviously, big changes come in the future of the franchise. So, talking about that, been playing a little uh, Beat Bullet Storm, I think, since last time I was on here. And uh, what else have we been playing? Bouncing around a little bit, actually. So, uh, again, guys, thank you for doing what you, you do. Um, do appreciate it. If you haven't, sorry. If you haven't already, hit that like button, share this out, help us out a little bit. David Prine, I guess I, I got that pronunciation from Rand. I should have known better. And And uh, hopefully, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> shout out to <laughs> shout out to David Prine for coming on and uh, talking a little bit about the future of the box and and having to because it's obvious, you know, he's he's taming himself down a little bit, but then he's like, no, I'm really excited for for what we're doing here and. And, you know, you kind of got to ask a question in a different way, get a slightly different response that tells more of a story. But uh, when it comes down to it, you know, you could tell that he's he's excited to talk about the specs, but he can't do it. And I can't wait to have him one after this stuff's been confirmed. Um, he did talk a little bit about, you know, the way they're doing their SSD is different and, and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know exactly. I had to go back and re-listen to that. He kind of walked it back after we started saying, ooh, tell more. You know, like, it's very obvious. You know, he's got some things he wants to say, and he knows more than he's given on, obviously. But I, uh, I'm i very, but again, we got more people from that team that we can have on as well. So uh, next week, Seamus Blackley will be coming on. He is the creator of Xbox, uh, the original Xbox, and we'll kind of uh, get his take on the current situation, good or bad. That's the thing about Seamus. Very, very blunt, honest person. And, you know, you got to love it. So should be yeah. a great show as well. Uh, but, again, thanks for joining us, guys. If you haven't already. Dealer? Yeah. Sorry, not to cut your outro, but just before we let you, uh, before you close everyone out, <laughs> Wilming Hood uh, actually donated 99 U.S. dollars, and he said hit the like button, everybody. Sorry. I think that's old. I already mentioned that during the uh, – but, yeah. Shout, Ooh, out, shout out to Wilming Hood. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, brother. <laughs> most talented. The most talented. But uh, again, guys, thank you for doing what you do. You make the podcast what it is. We are going to get out of here. Have a great night. And uh, everyone get some rest. You know, some, guys, some really tired looking people in the chat. So, get you know, some, some of you guys are <laughs> super tired. So, get no, get, get some rest, guys. We're out. Hit the like button. Woo!